Uh, greetings uh, to all my esteemed participants. I hope you all are doing great and good health. My name is Mubashir Mushtaq, and I'm the regional manager for MEA and India Satellite Geo Solution. I warmly welcome you all in this webinar today, which is <clears throat> Detailed Overview and the Narration for Roads in SatSurf. I hope you can hear me very well, loud and clear. And let's get started. Well, in this webinar, we have three segments, which is okay. <clears throat> the first content that we have is brief introduction of roads in SatSurf, designing of roads in SatSurf, and how to carry out road stakeouts in SatSurf. So let's go, let's get started with the first one, the introduction of roads in SatSurf. So there are some examples of different types of roads in the real world, and let's learn how to design these roads in SatSurf. So you can see all these roads here with the hair pack. One second. So as you can see, this is my, okay. So this is my here pin band curve in the hill roads. As you can see, there are different other roads. So let's see how th this whole designing of the road started. So it starts with first, that is your survey. That is where you understand the chronology of road design in highway engineering. So first one is what we do when we are going to design any roads. First of all, you're gonna go for the map study. In the beginning, various data in the form of maps, aerial photographs, charts, and graphs, etc. are collected. And these graphs and maps you can collect from the concerned department just to give a you know, what we can say is a Ricky survey, or we can just fixing an alignment. That's it. We're not doing anything right now. We're just fixing a alignment. And after when we fixed an alignment, we go for the preliminary survey or the Ricky survey where we just identify the trains, the physical features, both man-made and the environmental. After all of these things, after this part and this part we are done, we go with the detailed survey. So in the detailed survey, so right now this is an entirely a brief thing because I'm not going into details right now because it's a very vast field. So in the detailed survey, there are a couple of steps. First step is that is my strip plan. So my client is asking me to make the strip plan. That is a detailed strip plan of the site plan with the fixed corridor. It's collected with the help of GNSS and total station. And before, I guess, four or five years back, the total station are more prominent and these kind of surveys are done with the total station only. But now the GNSS technology have increased immensely and you can do the precise survey with the help of the GNSS equipments. So what exactly the corridor is? The corridor is, say for example, this is my alignment. This is the left side, this is the right side, and this is the whole corridor, which is, say for example, 200 meters. This will be my corridor. So my corridor is 100 meter left, 100 meter right. Okay. <clears throat> so the next step is collection of cross sections and L sections. While doing the site plan and the strip plan, what I'm doing is I'm collecting sections that is i'm collecting the nsls or the ogls the natural surface level or the original ground level that is this is say for example my road i'm collecting my cross sections with the cross section interval of 10 20 and simultaneously we are collecting the data for my l section that is my longitudinal section the cross section is what i it's, it's the section which is along the width of the road and L section, long journal section, which is the section along the length of the road. So this will be my L section here. So L section helps us to fix the gradients and the design with the profile. So once we are done with it, we go for the process of data. The collected data are then being processed with the software like AutoCAD, 3D Civil, AutoCAD, Simple AutoCAD, or you know, there are many other softwares in the market right now that you can process your data with. And once the data is processed, now the designing part comes up. 
So in the designing part, what exactly are these? So these are the geometric design. First one is your horizontal alignment details. Second one is your vertical alignment details. Third one is the cross-section alignment details, the super elevation, cut and fill quantity. And this particular cut and fill quantity, you can you know, have it if you're designing the hill road specifically. And then comes the side slope. So we're going to talk all of these things here in this webinar one by one. Okay, so let's find out how to design the roads using the SATSURF. So what SATSURF is our software, which we are using in all our GNSS <clears throat> procedures. It's our field software. So how let's find out how to design, how to design roads using the SATSURF. There are some terminologies that we are using in your software center line. Many of you guys have already known all, all of these things as a intersection method, cut and fill. So these are all the things that we're going to discuss and we're going to discuss it one by one. It's kind of a bit messy, but yeah, we'll start it out. Okay, so let's uh, start with the design of roads. So first is, this is your prompt. The prompt is when you click on a road design uh, icon in your software, this is the prompt that you'll see. And this, you will see the road name, then you will see the brake chain, center line, profile, cross section, side section, construction design. So the center line is termed as the alignment. Profile is termed as the vertical profile, cross section, and so on and so on. So alignment, let's, let's see what alignment is. So alignment, is this the center of this particular road? As we have you see in the graphical representation, this yellow line is my horizontal alignment. And the same thing we have shown in our sets of software. So this is my center line. These are my offsets over here. I'm being clear so far. So let's go ahead with the first part, which is alignment of roads using SATSURF. And we have three methods. You can design your horizontal alignment in the SATSURF in three different methods, which are the intersection method, the element method, and the coordinate method. I mean, you can use all of these three, the three methods to design your horizontal alignment by using the SATSURF software. So let's start with one by one. First one is intersection method. These are the intersection method in which we have DP, the line, tangent point. The more important here is these two, the IP1 and IP2, that are the intersection points. And there, then there are the tangent points, TP1, TP2, TP3, TP4. So this is just an, a, a default uh, thing over here. You can have a different sort of a road with a different things over here. This is just a practical presentation, or you can see it's a default road where we have, you know, managed to make you understand the beginning point and the tangent point over here, the IPs. And... Okay, let's see how to input the parameters. So, inputting the parameter is first the name of the intersection point. It's obvious. You have to give the name of the intersection point. Then the coordinate of the intersection point. It's compulsory that you have to give. You should know the coordinates of the intersection point. And after then, there comes the station. That's, that's more important. The station, you have to know the station where exactly your intersection point is. All right. And after then, you have to give the radius, the arc, the spiral, the length of the spiral in, the length of the spiral out, and the virtual point. If you have any virtual points, you can do it. It's, it's not necessary to have virtual points. So let's start, let's see how, uh, how to input parameters in sets of by intersection method. So first one is the beginning point. The beginning point is more important that you have to give the coordinates of the beginning point over here as well as the station. After giving the station or the coordinate point, because I don't have any kind of uh, radiuses or spiral and spiral out, so I'll put it at zero, zero, zero. Then I'm giving the coordinates of intersection point, that is IP1, the northern, easting, and station over here. And after then, obviously, I have to give the radius this part, and I have to give the spiral in, spiral out. So this is my spiral in, this will be my spiral out over here, and then comes the radius. 
for the limit set. I have to do all of these parameters in this particular part. And as you can see over here, this is uh, our previous version, sorry, so this, and this is our new version of sets of where you can use just simply the spell parameters if you're if you're designing the roads in, in your software, you might know there is a big difference between this, this part and we have now the parameters. Okay. And we have a small video where we, where we are you know, showing you how to input all these details in intersection by using intersection point method. Road design, simple, easy, add. If you okay in this part we have the file as well so we can load the file more load the file click there it is PHI file we have already managed to input some of the data here so this is the beginning point where radius is zero <clears throat> spelling is zero 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 then comes the intersection point the various intersection point these are all the intersection points I'm not uh, giving any other thing, just the intersection points, that's it. This is GD38, 39, and all of these parameters you have to see by yourself, or you can check with your designer or your engineer, and they can give you all of these details. Radius, the, the spiral in, the length of spiral in, the length of spiral out. It all depends on what exactly you are designing. That's it. So once I'm done, I can view. This is the view of my road. All the intersection points are there. <clears throat> Just OK. Go back. Save it. That's it. I'm done with my road alignment. So there are many other things that are now crossed. So we have to design all of these things. First, my road alignment is done with the help of intersection method. Now we're going to check. We're going to see how to do the same thing while using the element method. I personally use the element method. Some uh, other surveys are much uh, comfortable while using the intersection method, but I, I most probably go for the element method. So in the element method, let's just uh, keep it clear. In the element method, we have to do the beginning point, the length of the line, and after then there is the spiral lens there. I have to do all of these parameters by one, one by one. So these are uh, these are the description of input parameters. First, we have to give the start point. That is obviously the start point is we have in intersection as well as well as in elements. So in start, we have to give the coordinates of the start point here and azimuth. If you have an azimuth, if you have any angle, <clears throat> then after then I have the line option. Okay, then after. The, Software will ask you, okay, you have given the point over here. Tell me, do you want a line? Do you want an arc? Do you want a spiral uh, curve? What do you want? So I'm up. So we'll show you how we can design all of these things. There is the arc parameters left and right, and there is the spiral parameters also here. So we have all of these things. Let's see. So input the parameters of road element in order with from starting point, that is the BP, that is the beginning point. I am giving uh, the beginning point as 000, and after then I'm giving the length of the line that is 100 meter, offset will be zero. And if I'm giving the offset over here, there will be another line like this. You <clears throat> All right, so after then there is a spiral here, then there is an arc over here. There are my parameters that I can set. So this is the left direction or the right direction. See, see for example, my line is like this, and I'm giving the, uh, the direction of my spiral as right, so it will be like this. Or I can give it as a left, so it will be like this. Simple and easy. There's no rocket science so far. Done. Again, we have a small video for you to make you understand better how we can design the horizontal alignment with the element method. Exactly the same thing with the road design. We have the name of the road. Okay. 
and after that you can choose line, arc, or whatever you want. Starting radius will be infinity, and radius you have two. Nice and easy. We can add another spiral curve. Start radius 100 and end radius will be infinity. That's it. Length, say for example, 50 meters. And add another line. So you can add the different different segments and you need to give the, if you are going for the line, you have to give just a simple a length of the line and the azimuth and so on and so on. So this is how you can see over here. So it's the same thing that I did in the previous one. I'm just saving the alignment, it's done. And after then, it comes the coordinate method. And coordinate method is similar to the element method, but here we are just using the coordinates, that's it. We are using the northing and easting, that's it. We are, we are not using the, the uh, spiral in, the spiral out. It's specifically this particular method, you know, uh, it's, it's being rarely used because there are no smooth curves and all. I'll show you over here. So in the description uh, parameters we have, we had to give the station first, that is northern easting. We had, say for example, that's zero, zero, zero. And after then we had to give the line. We have only line and arc over here. If you have line, you can give the station coordinates of start point and the end point. And this is, this is something important that you need to know. After you define the end point of the current element, it will automatically be the coordinate of the starting point of the next element. I can show you how. So here we had here the end coordinate radius, obviously, and the direction. That's it. So this is first. This is my beginning point. Say, for example, my beginning point is zero zero zero. Then my A point will be five by five. That means this one is five by five. Now the is five by five. And after then, this particular part is B, that is 10 by 10 with the radius. So this A is over here. If you understand. So this is my the end coordinate of this part will be the first coordinate of my next element. And we have a video of the coordinate method as well. Exactly the same thing. Center line, here it is, go to the coordinate. Zero, 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 add, you can add a line. Five by, or two, two, that is the coordinate. I can, I can use whatever I want. That'll be the radius, of course, if I'm going for arc. Radius is three, left to right. Then I can add another part that is, I can add an arc or a line, it depends. So it will automatically be phased as five by five. That's it, done. Line again. Can be a one, and it depends. Can view, there you go. Can see. As you can see, there are no smooth curves, and this is the only issue here. That's it. The rest of everything is fine. So, so these are the coordinates that you can check in the display menu in the information bar. As simple as you save it, apply, OK, and automatically save as your Hosgate profile. So after the horizontal profile, we have a quick poll break. It's a minute poll break. So which method of designing the horizontal alignment is more convenient? What you feel is more convenient? Is it convenient to go for a coordinate method? 
is it more convenient to go for the element method or is it more convenient to go for the intersection method? I have feet again. So the school is which method of designing the holes in alignment is more convenient or you think it's more easy? Is it coordinate method? Is it element method? Or is it intersection method? I mean, these poles are for for internal part. Maybe we can up to improve our design or software. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So it's one that's quick. Good breaks are must. We all are humans. Yeah. All right. Just seconds left. Five seconds left. Quick. Thanks for your over here. After okay, let's start. So we have done our causal alignment so far. Now the vertical profile. So vertical curve, it's the vertical curve provides a gradual change between tangents of different grades. So what exactly are those? So this is my sag over here as you can see this is my sag this is my point of vertical curve point of vertical intersection vertical tangent so let's let's design let's see how how we can design all of these things so in this particular part we in sometimes we may have the sag you can call it a sag or sometimes we have the crust so let's see how we can design the sag and the crust This is the profile view in our software in which you can understand this is zero from zero to one, from one to two, this is total, it's 200, okay. It's 200 and this particular T and E, okay, I'll, I'll just make you understand what exactly this T and E is, say for example, this is, uh, my curve over here. This is my point of intersection, right? PVI. And this is point A to point B over here. This part is my T. And this particular elevation the distance, the E is the decision, distance of PVI to the bottom of the sag. So this is this is my T and T is this is point A one B the horizontal distance between A E this part A E and B E right so how do you put the vertical intersection in the I in sets of so this is this is more important. The sad self can only support circular curves from now into straight lines. So these are small video of the vertical profile. So in this vertical profile, you can see that we can, you know, we have to give a proper station. Where we are going for the sag or we are going for the crust. So, say for example, the station is right now we are taking at zero. We can give it the proper station, the proper point. And the height is, say for example, 54.7331. 
and the radius will be obviously zero because it's the first point. It's how the sag started. And after then, the second point, say for example, it's at, okay, yeah, we, we have started it again, just to show you. The height will be, the radius will be zero. Okay, at the second point, is at 100 station. And after then I have to give the height because it's sag, so so the height will be less than the point E, that's 53.3 only, 54.3 only, sorry. And after then, then it comes back to normal, 254.7331. So there you go. As you can see over here, this is the whole graphical representation of what we have designed so far. At station 40, as you can see, there are you can you can change the stations as you want. Say for example, we have we have a station from zero to hundred, from hundred to two hundred. You can check the details of station 40, station 50, station 60, whatever you want. Okay, this is this is the vertical profile. Now comes the cross section, which is quite interesting and I think that I'm fascinated with the cross sections okay so cross sections shows the position and the number of vehicles and the bicycle lanes and sidewalks along with your cross slopes so this is the top view of the cross section this is my road center line over here and these are my cross sections as you can see the small dots these are the different points that we have written the data on and after then you can see and there is a road distance as well of 10 meters. That means it has a cross section interval. Say, for example, it's 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters. It depends. <clears throat> so I'm just going to delete it. Right. Now, here we go. So this is uh, the typical cross section of the road in, in which I have a crown over here. This is my center point center point here and after then there's this roadway or in some countries we can call it as carriageway and after the carriageway you can see the small curbs over here the curbs are done after then there's a sidewalk a green area then there's there are these side slopes over here and i can show you a, a detailed uh, cross section uh, sorry uh, a normal cross section or you can say ideal cross section normally it's like sometimes like this this is my slope this is my CP over here, center point. This is my left bitumen top, LBT, or we can call it uh, RBT, the left right bitumen top. And after then, there comes the shoulder. Okay, there's a shoulder there, and after the shoulder, then comes the drainage part. Yeah, this is my green. This is my carriageway. This is my crown over here. So this is my idle cross section. And after then, there comes the cuts and the fill slope. It depends how you're designing the cross-section. Okay, let's drop it. That's it. And this is the graphical representation of rules that you can see in Setsu. You can see the gradient, you can see the curves, you can see the sections over here. And let's see, let's quickly see how to design this cross-section because it's way too much easier. So first of all, we had to give the name of the road here, done. And after then we had create we had to get a gradient or we had to get a ratio. If it's in some countries they are using ratio, in some countries they are using gradients, it depends. And after then we had to give the width, we had to give the curve width, we have to give the construction height if optional. The construction height is this is the curve, this is the construction height. The construction height where you can give the heights of the sub base code, the base code, the varying code, if you want all of these detailed cross sections in SATSURF, yeah, you can use it. But yeah, we can call it, okay, let's put it as an optional. We just want to survey it. But in some point, the customer wants these kind of things. So we have uh, the construction height as an option as well. Okay, so we have a video for you how to design a simple cross section. Easy. Here are the cross sections, as you can see, there is there are left and right uh, identity. So that means if I'm designing something on left, it will automatically be on right. 
So I'm designing my road wave, the gradient of 1.5, the road width is 4.5, that's it. So you can see there is the identities, are there. there are both identities for the same part. And after then I can design the sidewalk, it depends, say for example, the gradient will be minus one, the width will be two meter, the curve will be point three or point two, whatever you like, whatever you want. View, as you can see, the curves are being designed on both sides of the road, left and right. Now I'm going to design something on the left side only. That is the green part. Or I can, if I can design the right side as well, I can just select on the right hand side and that's it. There you go. It's, it's quite easy and quite simple. Uh, we would like to you to go for the set surf and design the design this cross section. It'll just take you only five to ten minutes to get to know what exactly or what, what exactly is happening there. So yeah, so right now I'm designing something on the left side only. That's it, as you can see. I've designed the water side on the, on the left part of the road. And with the details, you can see all all of these things. Yeah, I'm clicking apply my road. Run section is done, so we can call it a row section. Once that's done, I'm done with the cross section. Now comes the super elevation. Ah, but the super elevation is uh, a science by itself. So we have, if if you are from the civil engineering background, you might have known that you have to properly design the super elevation. And you know, there are various factors that is vehicle friction factor, there are velocity of the vehicle, there are acceleration due to gravity, there are, I mean, there are a lot of sort of other things, but right now I'm not going there. We are being very simple in this software. But that means you have to design the super elevation first and after and just give the parameters there. So how we can do that? So uh, yeah, super elevation is just, you know, you, as, as I can, in a layman language, I can tell you it's just a banking of the rules where one side goes up and the other one is remains so the same, just to you know, uh, counteract, the, counteract the effects of centripetal force, or we can, which we can balance, we can, as you can see, the balance the, uh, the centripetal force, which can reduce the tendency of vehicle to overturn or skip. So let's see what. Super elevation. This is beautiful right now here. Okay, so this is uh, S1, my section one, where my gradient is normal or here. And after then, as you can see, the gradient changes where this part is going a bit up, and S2 is at its best. That is, it's going more up over here, the left, the right side of the road, and then S3, then S4 comes back to normal. So let's see how we can do the super elevation over here, how to input the parameters. First is we had to give the milestone. Milestone is very important. So for example, my milestone S1, the, the normal cross section is 1.5. Okay, over here, this is my normal gradient. All right. And after the, in S2, my gradient will go up. That's 20 over here. All right, simple, nice, and easy. And after then, it will be the same in S3, that is my gradient, will be 20. And in S4, it will be normal to life. So we have a quick video to show you how we can uh, design the super elevation. And you can design a super elevation in the cross section part only, where we have the standard cross section here, we have the super elevation. And then we have white piece. So let's then first, first is done. Let's go for the second one that is super elevation. There you go. This is uh, my cross section over here. The super elevation at right side of the road. So this is minus 1.5. This one is okay. Right side of the road. And I had to go 30. First, that is 20. I'm going for the gradient 20. Same, same 20. And after then, back to normal. I had to do exactly the same thing. But here, I have to do 
the gradient as minus 20, minus 20, and then after the name, because in the first right hand side it's positive 20, and then it's minus 20 over there. So, first one is okay. Let's go to the station. Let's search the station over here. That's quite an easy. That's the beauty of this software that you can check the cross sections here in the bottom. There you can go. There you can see there's the super elevation there. 40, check. Same at 50, check. It's back to normal. Nice and easy. Super. So we are done with the super elevation here. Now comes curve widening. Okay, so in, in curve widening, you know, in some part, you know, and we have uh, roads and we want a certain curve widening. You know, what we can do it, you know, it's because of maybe of the way we can construct I mean, for the for this for the stopping of the vehicle, or maybe there is some bus stand over there. In that case, we are doing this curve widening. And how we can do it, as you can see, the curve winding part in sets. Uh, and let's see how we can uh, put the parameters of curve winding in the sets. Uh, first is obviously we have to give a milestone from where we have to start the curve. And we can do exactly the same thing over here, like this. I'm trying it. It's not this. Okay, I can do same thing on the right and on the left hand side as well. So let's see on W1 that is that is from this part, from center part to extreme edge, that is 4.5, that's a normal uh, carriageway distance. And after then comes W2, that is 20 over here, then comes W3, that is at station 40, that is station 30, that is 40, 20 again, and uh, W4 will be normal to 4.5. And let's see how we can design the widening in sets of. We're done with the standard cross section. We're done with the super elevation. Now let's start with the, the widening here. That right side, I can do the left side. I can do the right side. Right now, I'm just going for the right side only. 20 at station 20, I'm going for 4.5. Then obviously, I had to add another point that is 30 for the width is 20 and after 40. I hope you all understand what, what all, all, all of these are happening right now. It's simple, it's easy. And after on station 50, I have to go back to normal that is 4.5. View. In view the station over here. Uh, we have started from 20 and we went up to 30, 40. So let's start 30. There you can see the, the curve is one. The carriageway is one. And after 50, it comes back to normal. We'll save it, press OK, go back. We'll show you how we can do all of these things here. There you go, there's the curve winding over here. Okay. And I can do exactly, I did it on the right side, I can do it from the left side as well. So, so far we are done with the horizontal alignment with the three different methods. We are done with the vertical alignment. We are done with the super elevation. We are done with the cross sections. We are done with the curve widening. Now comes the last part of this particular geometry is side slope, which is quite important. Side slope, what are these side slopes? Well, side slopes are generally used in the hill roads. All right. So this is my travel way or the carriage way over here. Then comes my shoulder. This is my hinge point, and after hinge point, this is my side slope. This is my shoulder, and that was my side slope. And we're going to design, and we're going to learn how to design these side slopes. You know, there are two different things, two different side slopes. One is the cut slope, and one is the fill slope. So we're going to learn how we can uh, design all the, both of these two in side surf, and how we're going to place these two in a particular milestone in a particular cross section. So, so field slope. So here is the field slope where my original ground level is this. 
but I need to fill it. So this is my filling part. I need to fill this part. I need to fill up. Fill, 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 fill. All right. And then comes my cut slope. The cut slope, I have to cut this part. Cut, 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 cut. So let's see, let's find out how to combine the side slope of the cross section and set surf and how to design both of them. So first of all, these are the parameters. This is my hinge point over here. And after then my hill slope height, that is seven by two. Right now here we are going for, not for the gradients, we are going for the, for the ratio, seven by two. That is, I'm going seven uh, in, in forward direction and seven in down, or one, or seven in one. And after and after then we are uh, we are going for the create factor over here. And once the create factor is done, we can call it a stage. This part. Why? Why the stage? Because the rainwater will come up here, It'll be here for some time, and after then go back to my train. And then we can design the ditch. The ditch is what we can call as a drain. So this is my drain part over here. This is these are the elements and the demo that we have created so far over here, over here. And then comes my cut slope. Cut slope is easy, simple. It just reverse all the fill slope. So first, what we are designing is we are designing the ditch first, that there is in the drain, and we are designing the stage, and after then we are designing the cut slope. That's it. These are offsets of hinge points over here. Once we are done with it, we have, okay, we have the video over here for the side slopes. Add a section, the side sections, I can add the demo one, that is, and I can call it as a cut. So I'm giving the fill slopes over here. platform. So what I'm doing is I'm first designing my fill part and after then I'm designing my cut part. So then after then we both join these two things in your cross section. So ditch, ditch top width. There you go. Okay. First one is fill. Now I can add the cut one. The cut one is the same as demo two. And I'm going for the cut part. I'm giving the name, simple and easy. In, in the cut, as I told you, I had to go for the ditch. Then I have to go for the platform. And I, after then, I had to go for the slope. So this is it. And the beauty of the software is that it will show you all these things one by one. If you have selected the ditch, it will show you it will view the ditch and after the platform and after the cut slope. And more, we are we are improving our engineers in the SAT lab. We are improving, you know, day by day, and we are making sure that uh, the the user will get a good experience of designing the roads and good experience to handling the software in the nutshell. So this is it. We have designed the two side slopes. One is the cut side slope, and the one is the fill side slope. Let's apply it. Okay. There you go. I'll go back here. Going to the road stakeouts. <clears throat> there you go. Selecting my file. This is my view over here. You can go for the cross sectional view. Just clicking this button. That's it. My cross sectional view is here. You can select demo one. Okay, it'll ask me where you want to select it, right or the left side. Okay, we'll go for the right one. That's it. As you can see, that what we have designed is there on my cross section. And you can stake out the cut and fill how we, that's like, like how we, uh, you know, stake the, uh, the particular cross section on the field. There you go. These are the different types of, and if you am choosing the right one, there you go. It's, and you can choose right or the left side, and you can choose you want to cut or the fill. It depends on what cross section you are in, and 
Simon Days, you know, in a safe example, RD7 or the station 100, you want a cut slope, you can use it. You can you know, use the cut fill or cut from the right or a fill from the left. Just how it is. Simple and easy. Okay, so we are done with the fill uh, side slope as well. And let's have a quick poll. So in the quick pool, we have so this is uh, how frequently, and this is something uh, quite uh, important because we need to know uh, how frequently do uh, you use the road design option in the field control? Uh, are you using it uh, oftentimes, or are you using it less uh, frequent, or are you using it quite often? Because that that makes us and our engineers to do a lot of other things in our software, to incorporate other things as well. This is something important for us to do. Know uh, your opinions. Mm -hmm. How frequently do you use the road design option in the field controller? Oftentimes, less frequently, quite often. Okay, thanks for your <clears throat> feedback. Let's get started with the construction design. So, and construction design is uh, kind of optional. Some people use the construction design and some people are like, okay, we have other things uh, in the design part as well. But yeah, here we have option for the construction design, which is we have four construction designs here. We have uh, the cover culvert, or we can call here it as a box culvert in some countries. This part, this is my box culvert over here, and there's a circular culvert, or we can call it a pipe culvert, and it's a passageway, then it's a foot bridge. So let's see how we can design all of these three things, you know, in sets of. So we have an option over here. I need to write. So there are four types of constructions will be abstracted to this model. So this is so one is we have two different two main models. One is the straight one, and another one is the slanting one. What exactly the slanting one is? See, for example, this is my road over here, and this is my pipe culvert. So like to make you understand like this, this is my pipe culvert over here. So it's on a certain angle here, so this part. So we have to select on our uh, construction menu here, here, that if it's a slanting or is it a, a straight one. So there it is how to input the construction parameters and sets of. We have to give the station, at what station this construction uh, option will come up. At what station you have the pipe culvert, at what station you have the box culvert, you have to give the station as well. Then we have to select the type, what exactly is it is there on that particular station. And after once it's done, we we have to we have to check whether it's a slanting one or it's exactly perpendicular to your road. So it's, if it's a slanting one, you have to give the angle over here as well. After then you have to give these parameters, which is front width, back width, left angle, right. No, left length, right length, center height, scope. So we have, I guess, quick video just with that. Go to the construction design at station at 100 uh, station. I am saying that, okay, I'm having a circular culvert with the, a slanting one, or I can go for the straight one. I'm having a slanting one at the 100 station that means at road distance at rd as you can see at rd 100 i have a circular culvert and i'm giving all the parameters over here 
after giving the front of it, giving the length, the right, the height if you have any, or say for example, if there are some kind of a slope, you have to give the slope as well, <coughs> because water has to go from one side to another side. So yeah, slope is must. There you go. Ah. Done, in view, there you go. This is my uh, this is my uh, details of all the because we have the all these things that we have already carried out. That is ten meters, nine meters. We have all these parameters there, and with the with the with the slope as well, we have here as you can see the sixty degree slope. After ten, it's done. Okay, so it's done. Let's have a quick poll, and this poll is because we need to know. If you are using this construction uh, tool, I mean, this construction design, do you find do you find this construction design a useful option? Yes or no? Because if it's if it's useful for you, then we can you know add more construction designs in it, and we can make our software better and better each day. Do you find the construction design a useful option? Do you do you want it? In your field controller, or you're okay with it if you don't have it. Okay, thanks for your feedback. And this is, this is really important for us. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started with the next part, and which is our last part, and quite interesting one, which is how to stake up roots and sets of. So, uh, staking out the roads in sets. So see, we have learned so far that we can design the roads in uh, in sets of, but, but sets of, and in every other software, if you can use any other software in the market right now with a field controller, they have their own limitations, right? So, in this particular part, what we can do is we can import a land XML file, which is a AutoCAD resale file. Which contains all the elements, all the elements like horizontal alignment, uh, vertical profile, each and everything, the, uh, the super elevation, because we can design each and everything there. And after then, just export our XML file directly to our controller, which, which is easy. I mean, it, uh, it will ease the stake out work for us you know, if we have all these details by our side and we have everything on our controller. So we're going to learn how to import the land XML file. In our sets of software. So we go to the root design, we import, we select the root file that is root XML. Easy, simple. We click OK, the file will be imported successfully. And you can check all the attributes in the XML file. As you can see, there are the road alignment is tick, the profile is tick, there are the different cross section is tick. So there are all the things that you can see. These are the things that are already in my land XML file. So load the file or for stake out, it's exactly simple and easy. Let's go to the stake road, then go to the this is my this is my file already that I have already imported. This is it. Choose the road file in the library, then click OK and enter in the main interface. There you go. Then you we can start the values and you can start the milestones and stuff that I'm going to talk uh, about this this very good part in a while. How we can do that. Okay, so this is uh, my stake, uh, out, how to stake out the center line. So, you know, while staking out the center line, I'll just make a quick 
line over here. Say, for example, this is my center line and this is my point zero. And my client wants that I want to give point after five meters and after 10 meters. So say, for example, if my customer say that, okay, I need uh, points to be staked out, be staked out after five, minutes, uh, five meter interval. So I can select here as five. And in every five meter, I'm going for like five, this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, so on and so on. This is what exactly this milestone is. Okay, I just need to quickly rub it. Sorry for the mess. Okay, so this is it. As you can see over here, this milestone is 5. After then, milestone will be 10, so my point will be here. After then, it will be 15, my point will be here, so on and so on, milestone 20, that's it. So yeah, so first what we are doing here is we are just staking a simple line and after then say for example, I had to stake the offset as well. So I have an option over here, I'll show you how. So milestone is zero, offset is one, and step is one, as you can see, step is Two, then the step will be three over here, then the step will be four, then will be here, so on and so on. I can put it as a five, so the steps, the offsets will be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, so on and so on. And uh, we have a small video here. And I'm glad that you are having so much patience no, no, really happy <clears throat> that you're with me so far. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Anyways, so let's go for the uh, stake roads. We are clicking on the road file there. This is my top view. Oh, that is my top view of my road. I can change it over here. The cross section view from the top view. There you go. I change it. As you can see, this is the this is my cross section over here, and one, two, and this point here, there is my GNSS standing on my. This is see this particular line over here, which you can see is design cross section. But right now I am like standing like here. This is my original ground level. You need to understand this. This is my original ground level, and this is my design section. So what, what it's saying, it's saying you need to cut here, you need to go down 4.2 meters. Okay. This is how, how this red dot over here indicates where our GMS is. Okay. Milestone. Giving the milestone C, as you can see, I have this point here. So if I'm giving the milestone as five, I'll, the next point will be five, and the one will be 10, the next will be 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, so on, so on, so on. This is it on the part. And, and Simon Davis, we can add the offsets as well. Say, for example, we have to give the left offset or the right offset, as, as you will be seeing in, in this video. Yeah. This is the milestone, and now I'm getting the offsets. The milestone is seven, so it will be seven, 14, 21. There you can see, yeah. This is my point, this is my offset point. So my GNSS is going there, and once it's done, and after then, it will ask for the next step. So it will be, 
Say, for example, if it's if the offset is one meter, so the next point will be two meters, and three meters, and four meters, so as you can see, so this is my G, this is over here, and this is my offset. So the offset over here. Nice and easy, simple. You know, we are not going to be a thing, and it just you know it takes a lot of time. It's simple. I'm giving just the offsets, and and the software will tell me exactly this is done. This point is done. Go to the next point. The next point. The next point. So on and so on. My current line there is another offset as you can see. So shift it. Yeah. And you can see here. This point, and after then, if I stick another point, it will be here, it will be here, it will be here, and so on and so on. So this is it. So thank you all for holding up tight for for one hour. I know it's a bit, a bit difficult, but anyways, I hope you you got to learn a lot of things from. For, for sets of and, and the road design specific to this whole road design. And uh, we have a QA session as well. If you guys have any questions related to this webinar, you can ask me straight away. And there is a question bar as well. If you have any questions, just raise your hand and we have a limited time for the Q&As here. Um, okay, we have uh, a one question in our question bar. It's, Oh, okay. If we can, if we have a civil 3D XML file which contains alignment, profile, and cross sections, can SATSURF load all these elements? Yes, of course, it can load all of these elements itself. That's that's how we have you know, we have shown you before as well that you can load all of these elements of an XML file directly with SATSURF. Uh, could you explain something about volume calculations by sets of? Yes, you can do the volume calculation as well in the sets of whether we have an option for DTM. So you can use the volume calculations for this. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it's uh, Isabella uh, Pizica from uh, Bulgaria. And thank you so much, mm -hmm. first of all, for uh, the presentation. It was excellent, really easy to follow. So mm -hmm. my question would be, uh, what is more convenient to import an XML file from Civil 3D or to design the road in the software? All right, so uh, to be very frank with you, um, that I can suggest you that if you have the Civil 3D file, it will be more convenient for you to design uh, or to stake out the, that particular file there. Yeah. Or in some cases where you have a short distance road alignment, you can design the road alignment in your software and that's it. So it depends on what exactly you're working on. If you're working on a big project, you can go ahead for a proper Linux file where your designer can give you all these details of the, of the road. And if you have a small or short distance road, you can do it by our software as well. That's the issue. Hope I uh, I need the question clear and uh, answer you. 
Is, is there any other questions? No, no, thank you. Thank you so much again. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, we have uh, another question from Mr. Server. Can I import the DXF file as well? Yes, so our new version of SATS software can import, you can import the DXF file uh, in our SATS software as well. Yes. Any other question? Because uh, we are just done with the time now. And I thank you all for being patient and listening to this webinar and paying attention. I hope to see you soon.